So I want to thank everyone for joining us today on the um, Sage 500, what's the road ahead happening with uh, the Sage product. Um, I'm Sir Blumenthal, one of the, um, uh, you guys have all, I've worked with all of you in the past. Um, what today's goal is that we just got back from Sage Summit last week, and we've heard about all the stuff that's going on with um, the Sage products, and we want to make sure that we quickly turned this around and informed you of all the changes that um, that Sage is making with the uh, the 500 product. A um, couple things you'll notice is that right off the bat is that um, the word MAS is gone. Um, about a year ago, what Sage has done is that they have removed the word MAS, um, or in some of the other products like ACPAC, they removed the word ACPAC, and they have changed the name to the product. So for those who you know used to know MAS 90, MAS 200. They renamed that to be Stage 100. Um, APAC was renamed as Stage 300, um, and Mass 500 was renamed as Mass uh, or Stage 500. Uh, Peachtree was actually renamed as um, Stage 50, and um, so the goal is to kind of know where you are in the evolution of the Stage product. Um, the other thing that you're going to be noticing is that starting next year is that it's not going to have version 7.3 or 7.4 or I know one of you guys are back on 6.3. Um, it's not going to be a version like that anymore, but it's going to be a version 2013 or the year that it was released. Um, there's a lot of positives for that and also keeps us from having to have a huge Excel spreadsheet of which release came in what year. So we uh, now it's a lot easier to remember that information. So say just standardizing that across all the different products. Um, so for today's time, what we're going to do is I'm going to go through some of the new stuff here. Um, I'm going to talk to you not what they're just doing in 2013 release, but also what's going on beyond that. Um, again, if you put your phones on mute, don't put us on hold. I love some of that whole music out there, but we're not going to listen to it today. Um, if there's any questions along the way, you can unmute line. Also, you can use the um, comments within GoToMeeting. Um, so this is the agenda for today, the introductions, kind of what the road ahead is, is the change for 2013. Um, talk about some year-end promotions for ISM, and then Q&A, which is always the most important section of them all. Um, just from an introduction, who's currently on our Stage 500 team right now, these are just the consultants, um, myself, Becky Keene, who um, a lot of you have been working with recently. Um, she has been, um, she used to work for Stage a long time ago, worked for another reseller for about 10 years, and came to work for ISM. I'm honored to have her. She is now running the Sage 500 department for ISM and has been doing a really great job. Um, sorry, I just had one person trying to get in and try to deal with that, so apologize for the, um, the delay there. Uh, Donna Gallardo, who recently joined ISM as of about three months ago, um, has, again, a huge experience actually her and Becky used to work together, um, has very, very technical in terms of um, SQL-based store procedures, things like that, and so it's been a great asset for us. Um, so if you need any major technical help, uh, really good with VB scripting, things like that. So great, again, another a really great resource we have. And then Josh Getman, who's been here for about four or five years, some of you have worked with them, very, very strong in, um, in integrations and um, distribution aspects of the Sage 500 product. So just to kind of give you an update, for those who worked with Jeb in the past, he um, actually um, got out of the industry, so we uh, wish him the best as an end user, actually, So, uh, but a uh, very good guy. So just to give you an idea of who's on our team here. Um, so where is Sage headed? And I'm going to kind of I hate all the little way the bullet points pop up here, but basically what Sage is really working on is improving the user experience. Um, one thing, and this is really going to go beyond the next release, but they are looking at things of how to improve the interface, improve the lookups, make things easier to use, and that's going to be one of the key points going forward. Um, in this next release, they're working on some of that stuff, but going forward, that's going to be one of the most important aspects of this program. Um, additional services, um, you know, for example, um, how do we do integrations and improved integrations with other products? Uh, better business intelligent reporting, um, a lot of new features, and then one of the most important things are going to be hitting is innovation, meaning um, a lot of stuff with the tablets, um, how you can be doing everything from a tablet base and how that integrates with the Sage 500 product. 
So where they're really looking at this, and this kind of goes over some of it here, where they're doing connected services for freight and, freight and shipping. Uh, they're doing a lot of stuff. You'll see a lot of things for those who are technical called S-Data, which is Page's way of sending information back and forth technically with other products, and it's called S-Data. Um, you're going to see a lot of stuff with Page Payment Solutions, which we'll talk about a little bit further. Um, productivity enhancement. They're doing a lot of stuff in the manufacturing area with this release. Um, architecture stuff that they're fixing, such as SQL 2012, compatibility, Crystal uh, version 14, also known as Crystal 11, compatibility. Um, long term, they're going to rewrite the sales order screen again. So for those who went through the sales order screen, the first time they realized they made, there was a lot of things that need to improve on that, and they're going to be working on that. Uh, a page advisor, which is more of a notification and alerting system. Um, and those are the type of things they're going to be really working on going forward from 2012 to 2013 uh, and on. So the goal is to have ERP being the center of your entire product. But the goal is, is that everything being web-based. So, for example, Mass would still be on-premise, but all these different things can be then connected to the Sage Cloud where you can connect your CRM, your Sage Payments, payroll, uh, freight and shipping, sales tax, all those different things virtually. And that's going to be a very, and you're seeing this across the industry. So instead of saying SAS, or saying Mass 500, I said now I owe a dollar for saying the word MAS, but instead of Sage saying it's a, um, a SAS solution, what they're doing is tying SaaS solutions into the on-premise model so you have the best of both worlds. It's a hybrid approach where you own the data, but you're not using, you're not storing all your data up in the cloud, but you're using cloud integration services. So that's where you're going to see a lot of stuff coming from Sage, a lot of mobile stuff. They know that's where everything is going. So I want to make sure everyone's on the same page there. So the next release that's coming out um, is coming out in November 2012. Um, at the end of this year, it's called Sage ERP um, 2013. And what they're doing is adding a lot of enhancements. And we're going to go through these enhancements because I actually have screenshots of a lot of them. Um, the neat thing about this is that it's about to go into beta. Uh, we're going to be getting our copy the first week of um, September. So we'll be get, playing around with it for three or four months. Uh, or three months before it's released, and we're part of the beta process. Um, so any clients that are interested in being part of the beta process, there is um, the, near the end, once they get to a candidate release, um, you can let me know, and we can sign you up for that. Um, so as you can see here, from an accounting point of view, we're going to go through a lot of these. Um, some of the big stuff is the credit card again, and we'll get to that in a moment. Um, for those who are doing ACH, they, they've improved the ACH functions in the next release. Um, now has a remittance form that prints out before, as you know, ACH is now is built into the Sage 500 product, but what they're doing is they're adding a remittance form so that could be printed out as well, just like a check step form. Um, the other thing that they're going to be fixing or adding is that one of the people, a lot of people have asked for the ability to import pending cash receipts in from other systems. Um, so what they're doing is, is that they're adding the ability for the import, in the import um, job or the import module to build the ability to import in to the pending cash receipts. This will also support bringing in credit card information as well as miscellaneous payments. So they, um, those are um, important things that people realize they need to bring in. Um, one of the most important things they fix is the miscellaneous cash feature in the system. Um, and before you can you used to be able to bring in miscellaneous cash, and then as I call it, it went into the black hole. It was very hard to track that information down. Now, what they're being able to do is you can reverse miscellaneous cash receipts. You can carry the comments all the way to the general ledger, but also um, you can also see it in your business insights explorer. So you can now see um, miscellaneous cash receipts in there instead of just um, it disappearing like it did before and just hitting the general ledger only. So that was one of the major things people asked for going forward. Um, from a bank rec point of view, and I know I got one company on the phone that's going to be happy about this. The form can finally be resized, can be resorted, um, and, and sorted all different ways, and regrouped, and things like that. So it's and you can drill down into things differently as well. So um, it's about time they finally got that screen standardized with all the other ones, and 
again, that's going to be in the next release as well. Um, the next thing that Sage is really working on is the Sage Exchange. And for those who have gone through the credit card process with Sage um, and using the credit card module, what Sage has done is that over time, uh, at first what they did was that they made their they brought the credit card module out. Then they, what they did was they made a and when they brought it out, they made a PCI compliant, uh, meaning that all the information was stored in the system and it was encrypted, and so it passed all the PCI compliancy. What Sage is doing at the next step is that they are removing all credit card information from the system altogether for an extra level of security. Um, this is an industry trend right now. What they're basically going to do is that the credit card information will be stored up on something called a Sage Exchange, which would be a um, directly with the processor, and it's all at that point, you know, obviously PCI compliant, but also highly um, guarded, regulated, and protected at that point. So what they're going to be doing is that um, in the, in the future release. Um, the credit card information will be removed and sent up to Sage Exchange, and then all the information is not then stored in the local database at all. So if someone was to steal your database or break into it, there will be nothing in there at all with credit card information. Um, they're also adding support for external card readers. So for example, if you do have a point of sale system or some type of screen that someone walks up with a credit card, uh, you can support the external card readers. And they're also going to be adding the ability for um, doing ACH receivables. Um, so if someone sends you information via ACH, you can be able to receive that information and mobile payments so that you can receive payments on your iPhone, your iPad, or Android device. So that's another way that they're going to be able, you'll be able to be in the field and take a credit card information or payment information while you're out with a client or something like that. Um, so that's a really big change they're making with the system. Um, one of the other things that people have asked for, and we've actually had to write this for a couple of our clients here, is the ability to copy a sales order, but it, unlike that, the ability to change the customer. So as you can see here on the screen, you can add the customer, so you can copy one sales order to another sales order and change the customer as well, and um, it makes it a lot easier to creating the sales order entry screen, or getting orders entered quicker. Um, one of the biggest complaints from an accounting aspect is that the, um, the ability to still post into back periods um, and, and lock future periods as well. So what Sage is going to be doing is they're going to be adding a whole new period and a new fiscal calendar screen where you can lock specific functions from happening. Um, so you can lock AP, AR, cash management, inventory, and manufacturing. Because if you know you close those modules, even though you close those modules, they could still hit the general ledger. So what they're going to be able to do is you can be able to lock those specific periods or the specific modules, and then that prevents accidental postings to the general ledger. Um, and then there will be some setup options under period end as well when you do period end processing. As you see the little highlighted bar down there, it says lock the AP. Um, period as well. So you'll see that there will be a new option as well under the period and processing menu to lock those periods. One of the other things that Sage is enhancing is the document transmittal features within the system. Um, a lot of people are sending them out and there's been several things that people wanted on them. Um, starting in 7.3, for those who are a little bit older on that version, they added the ability to send it off as a PDF. But now one of the other things they're doing is to be able to send it off to multiple contacts. So for example, if two people needed to get a copy of the email or an invoice or a statement, it will be sent to two people now instead of having to try to um, create a group or do something unique. So now it will support multiple addresses. In addition to that, in the document transmittal feature, we'll be able to in re replace certain values and words. So instead of just having a generic title saying, here's your invoice, you can now say, here's invoice number, and have a um, field replaced in there, and have any of the additional information put into the body of the text. So there will be mer um, uh, merging of the um, data values during the email generation. So again, very important to make sure this is done right. Um, one of the other things that we have heard and we have all joked around about since day one is that every time you go into a posting screen to post the system, 
it's a different posting process. Sometimes you don't have the preview button and you have it up on the toolbar and sometimes it says detail in one area and you know AR looks one way and AP looks another way and um, manufacturing is another way of posting things. So what they're going to be doing is that all the posting screens are now going to be identical. So as you can see here on the screen here, um, they have AP vouchers the same as PO vouchers, which is the same as uh, cash receipts uh, register. So all of them are going to have the same look and feel for the posting registers so that you don't have to go from one module to another and remember you have what choices you have at that point. And that's been one of the major complaints as well. So they just fix that in the upcoming release. Um, they're going to the customizer is one of the major things that they're going to be add, adding changes to. And this to us is something that is it, really amazing because in the past, if someone says, in the, like for example, in the customer maintenance screen, we don't have enough real estate, or in the inventory screen, we don't have enough real estate, what we've had to do is expand the size of the screen out, or you've had to ask us to program via, via source code, adding a specific tab um, so you can add more fields underneath that tab. Um, that will not be the case anymore. So what you're going to be able to do is that on those screens you're going to be able to add your own tabs so then you can store a lot more data easily on the system and customize the screens a lot easier. Um, so it's going to re reduce the amount of source code changes needed uh, for some of our clients. Um, also what we're going to be able to do is that if anyone's doing any type of VB scripting, meaning that if they have a button that does some type of logic, it's going to do some ch air checking along the ways there, so they've added some additional ability. Um, they've also added down below past uh, DM references to the form load and things like that. So we can actually have it do specific things like press buttons or um, set certain values a lot easier during the initial part of the screen load. So again, the goal is to cut down screen customizations and programming so that going forward um, you can upgrade a lot easier and without as many headaches. Um, one of the other things that they're doing is they're going to increase the, um, the Business Insight Explorer. Um, they're going to add more features to that. Um, for all the people who have used it in the past, it's good, but it, um, there, are some, you know, there are some issues with it. Uh, one thing we're going to be able to do is export to a PDF. So instead of exporting it to Excel, you'll also be able to export it to a PDF. Um, you'll be able to set the maximum row count coming back so that it just doesn't bring what you know nothing or everything. You can set maximum row counts so that you're not tying up the CPU of the system. And, and this is Becky. Can I be heard? Okay. Okay. I was going I can continue till he gets on. Um, so he he was talking about sending things to PDFs. I think you can kind of see it in the screenshot. One of the really nice things for, for some customers is that you'll be able to control um, access to, to explorers by a field. So if you have a salesperson that you only want to have see invoices for a certain customer class, you'll be able to do that. So they can give salespeople access to the customer list or the invoice list for their particular group and not have them have the ability to like download the entire um, customer set. So we'll let you go back to BIE now. Perfect. Yeah, there, you know, and once you start using this, this part of the system here, and if you're not using it, there is so much you can really do with it. And I, and I think one of the mistakes that we sometimes make is that we are so, when we do an implementation, we're so, we, we show you how to do all the neat things like, you know, make sure you do all this, your day-to-day -day tasks that we don't spend enough time teaching Business Insights Explorer. And we've had some lunch and learns on it, and we'll have some more lunch and learns going forward once 2013 is released. Um, now, some of the other things they've added, and this affects them, those with manufacturing here, and this is, these are some really cool features they've added to the manufacturing area here. Uh, first of all, they can now do non-inventory items in the work order routing. Um, that was always been a big issue. You can only do an inventory item, or you can only do labor. Um, labor now you can do non-inventory items as well. Um, so they can be a miscellaneous expense or a comment. Um, it's really good if you're doing outside processing to also do it, use it that way. Um, you can also override the standard cost from a maintained item. Um, the cost is included in the bill materials. And then we're also, they, a couple versions ago, 
Um, they add the phantom bombs, and they've now have increased the functionality of the phantom bombs as well in the system. So, um, for those who have, it's been a while since they looked at the manufacturing stuff. They've actually they've added a lot of new features in there. Um, the other thing you can do is you can back flush setup hours in the routing now. So we can actually do a set a back flush of hours now, unlike before. Um, so that that can help you make sure that you have realistic time frames set up in there. Um, uh, so that's one of the neat things there in terms of the, uh, the routing. And we can go into more detail if you want regarding that. Um, you can also delete and cancel work order. That was one of the people in the past were like, okay, hey, once I release it, what am I supposed to do with it? Um, so you can now delete it as it no longer, if it never existed. And you can put a reason code why the work order has been closed. So now we can start seeing tracking, you know, why are things getting closed ahead of time. Um, one of the other things that people have asked us to do constantly, and we've had to do it through some type of store procedure or some type of import, is global price changes. Um, so one of the fe features they've added is a global price change utility in the system so that at the end of this year, if you want to change all your prices as of January 1st and your cost, you're going to be able to do that. Um, so there's a whole utility now that created from that. And the nice thing is that you can edit and import it in from Excel, so therefore you can do all your manipulations in Excel and then bring that into the Sage 500 product. Um, you can also do global price changing based upon contract pricing, inventory pricing, matrix pricing, national accounts, promotional pricing, all those different things. And you can also bring in the different price breaks as well. So again, there's a lot of flexibility in the global pricing change utility now that they're adding in the next release. We've got a few clients that are going to be loving that. So what, any, other, any questions regarding some of the additional features they've added um, in the 2013 release there specifically? Some of the other things that they're doing right now is there are, as we said, they're going to be using Crystal 11, um, um, so 2011 going forward. Um, so, but and which is built around the .NET uh, infrastructure here. What they're doing is is that since not all the reports have been converted up to that version, there's going to be kind of, there it's going to install both Crystal 11 and Crystal 2011, which are not the same thing, um, with the client install, and that works fine. We've got multiple products doing that anyway. And what they're doing is they're upgrading a list of some of the reports the first time, and they're going to upgrade the rest on the next release in 2014. Um, so that's uh, that major question, question with Chris reports. Um, one of the last things they're adding to this next release is something called the visual process flow. And this is a product feature that they're adding to all the Sage software. So it's going to be it's a universal tool that they're adding, which allows people to visualize out, and you can make changes to this, um, visually set up how the process flow needs to occur. So for example, in purchase order here, you can see the process flow that you would enter. You would here enter a requisition, enter purchase orders. But you can customize this for your own office. So what it allows people to do is they can see the process flow, and then they can click on those buttons, and it will launch the screens automatically. So it's a nice way of, you know, for, for credit processing credit cards, you can see the ones on the screen as they added customer returns, period end processing, tic tac ship, uh, PO receipt, uh, invoicing, purchase order receiving, and invoicing returns, and work order process. So again, you'll be able to customize these um, for your own benefit. Um, this will support, um, this release coming out will support SQL Server 2012. I know we have almost no one running that version, but it does support it. It also supports Windows Server 2012, Office 2013, and most importantly, Windows 8. Um, so it's already supported. It does support the new Metro, or uh, not the Metro look, but it does support, it does work under Windows 8 under the desktop portion of Windows 8 which will be interesting to see how many of our clients adopt that technology. Um, going forward, some of the things that they're connecting services are, um, we kind of talked about this a little bit here, um, 
and we'll go through each one of these a little bit further here. Uh, phase exchange is what we talked about with the credit card processing. Uh, as you can see here, when they roll this out at the end of this year, it's going to have the same metro look that uh, Windows 8 is trying to put on everything. And you can see what your daily transaction volumes are and quickly get to um, certain parts of your account. They're also increasing the security on this as well significantly so that people, you can have people log in from your organization and only see specific stuff that we need to see. Um, as we talked about, they're actually adding mobile options and ACH as well. Um, one of the new features that they've adding is a, is a product called um, Shipping Link. Um, and this is a product um, that they, instead of it replaced Starship. So for those who have used Starship for shipping, um, Sage went to a, another product called Sh um, Shipping Link, and uh, it's a web-based solution that they tie into. For a lot of our clients right now, we've been integrating directly with um, UPS or FedEx or something along those lines because it's easy to do that. But if you need the functionality of rate shopping and stuff like that, like you were in big technologies, um, this is another option out there available to you. Um, so in terms of missing anything, oh, and the other thing is um, Sage sales, our sales tax. Uh, one of the things that Sage has added are uh, the last couple of releases is a product called Avalara that does sales tax calculation. So, um, what that will allow you to do is that when you enter a customer in the system, it will validate the address. It will figure out if that is a taxable jurisdiction for you or not. And every time you do a sales order, it will get the rate. When you do the invoice, it will validate the rate for you automatically. Um, one of the things they're adding to the next release is the ability for longitude and latitude calculations because um, the sales tax has gotten to the point now it's down to longitude and latitude calculations in some of the states, not based upon zip code anymore, so and street address. So they have gotten to a point of longitude and latitude, and that will be released in the next release as well. So a lot of changes in terms of making sure it stays integrated and it stays up to date with all the latest stuff going on out there. So in budgeting and planning, uh, Sage has had a module for a long time called Active Planner for budgeting and planning, and they renamed it budgeting and planning, so it makes sense for the title, and they've also reduced the price of that significantly. So that's one of the products out there for budgeting, if you want to do budgeting around Sage 500 product. Um, just for month of September, we got a couple promos going on. You can read those, basically 10% off any module. Uh, for any purchases over $5,000, we'll to knock off 20% off the total price. Does not include maintenance. Does include third-party products. and. Um, obviously, it doesn't include sales tax again, discount on sales tax. Uh, but those are just some promotions that we have for the ISM for the month of September. Um, with that, I'm looking at the time here. Um, you know, we always budget an hour for these, but I also want to make sure we budget a lot of time for any questions. I know a lot of people have some great questions. Um, so I'm going to open up the floor. If you have any questions, you can turn off the mute and ask them away. And I'll be happy to, uh, Becky or myself will be happy to answer for you. Got one here. Hey, oh, this is Jackie. I'm, I was writing stuff to you. I got a couple quick ones. First, does the consistent posting methodology apply to the manufacturing module as well? They have changed. Yes, the answer is that that will be changed in the 2013. Yes, that's my understanding. Okay. Can we get a copy? They, of this? Go ahead. And right now, they changed that significantly in the 7.4 release for the for the. So they've already made changes. So it's not the way that it used to be in the version you're on, where you have to create the batches through a one screen. Right. It's a, it they really changed it since then, since your release. Okay, and can we get a copy of this PowerPoint presentation sent to us? Yes, if you can do me a favor, just so that I don't send it out because it's eight megs and it's a, and I'll put it up on. I'm, if you send me an email, I will respond back and send it to you. That was one of my other questions. I was uh, statements I was going to make. I'll be happy to send this out to you guys. Okay. Um, and what your other question report was FRX. Yeah. What financial report writer did Sage end up with? They used to promote FRX, and and you know a couple years ago they were talking about going you know discontinuing that and changing it to something else. Where did they land on that? It's a great, great question. So um, I'm going to make sure that we answer this the most complete way there is. 
So let's start at the beginning. So FRX was um, a standalone product, you know, and a lot of different products. Microsoft ended up acquiring it, and Microsoft ended up killing it on purpose. So as a result, um, a lot of firms went out there and said, okay, what are we supposed to do for financial report writing? Sage came out with their product called Sage Business Intelligence. Um, the first couple releases, and I'm going to be very honest to our clients, and Becky, you're more than welcome to chime in on this, we felt like that it was not a viable solution for our clients. It was missing a lot of features associated to it and a little bit hard to use. Um, Sage has made a lot of changes over the last couple of releases to it. It's a product that's in all their it's a product that's attached to all their other product, all their ERP solutions. So the complaints that we were having were the same ones the people in the Sage 100 product were having, as well as the Appac Sage 300 people were having. Um, they're adding a lot of features to it. Over the years, what ISM has done is we've looked at other products as well to make sure that do we feel like you know we wanted to make sure that all of our you know, our clients were not relying upon one single financial report writer package. Um, so if Sage Business Intelligence works for a group of our clients, we have BizNet, which I know you're familiar with, but we have, BizNet is a product that has taken off significantly, which is an Excel add-in that allows you to add in, take values from GL, you can now bring in values from accounts payable and accounts receivable, and bring them into Excel, into certain fields in Excel, and you can get the information brought down and create links directly from Excel to Sage 500. The other option out there is a product that we've been working with called Renovo. Renovo is a, basically looks a lot like FRX. A lot of the people that used to work at FRX started up a product called Renovo. Um, they actually have a conversion utility that takes the information, takes your, your trees, your, col your columns, your rows, your trees, and can convert them into the Renovo look and feel with almost the same te terminology. Um, Becky, you've seen the product. Do you have anything you want to add in terms of Renovo? You s recently saw a demo of how it converted some of our clients' data. Um, well, the accountant and me just, just love the, the standard layout you know, that, that we think like with the, the columns and the rows and and your entries like FRX and that you're almost looking at a, a screen as you're going through it. So um, for personally, I liked it, but you know, I'm, I'm kind of you know heavy background in FRX, so to other people it may not be the best or really worth it. And, I think it's, and it's so one what, of the pricier ones. It is, and I, so I think what you know we've been recommending to our clients is that FRX will continue to work um, it's having more struggles right now because if you load it on a 64-bit machine or a Windows 7 machine, it's, the install is not easy. Um, some of our clients have moved over to Sage Business Intelligence. I would say more of them have moved over to BizNet and to Renovo uh, for their financial reporting packages. But in each of the, as I said, Sage is coming out with a lot of changes to the business insights or business intelligence with this next release. Did it answer your question, Jackie? Sure, Jackie. Yeah, it did. It did. Um, I, I personally like the BizNet, but I was wondering what Sage was promoting, what they finally ended up with. Um, and, you know, are, is there still a, you know, do they, do they have a third party either, um, I, I guess I'm looking at quality and scheduling. I mean, I, I know there were third party packages out there for the quality module and the, um, scheduling module, I mean, are those still pretty much the same ones as far as, and they haven't really changed the, the Mass 500 version of the, the scheduling and any other recommendations you have there on integration to, Mass, or to Sage 500 now? Um, for like quality, there's, um, I'm trying to remember, I, there, there is a, you know, from a quality, there's couple ones out there that do qual that have quality add-ons for the manufacturing. Um, there's pretty much two groups out there that have third-party add-ons for that process. Um, we've been working with one more that's um, um, by a company called EBS in Colorado that has a lot more uh, some really good quality stuff that um, some neat features in their manufacturing quality stuff over there. 
So we've been working more with them than anything else. Okay. And then they so that, then that's pretty much they really the didn't use any. Yeah, the scheduling stayed the same. <laughs> yeah. Okay. We may have another conversation with you offline, Stuart. Okay. Good questions there. So yes, that financial report writing, and we've even you know the nice thing about it is Josh um, got yeah, him in one of our guys. He's even written his own financial reporting just using SQL reporting services SSRS. So there's a lot of neat things you can do out there for financial reporting. Um, you know, I think that most of the people on the phone here have used BizNet on the phone. I think the biggest struggle, and they know about it, and they're coming out with a new release as in October. Um, BizNet is that it makes the install a lot easier. They're claiming that that's their number one complaint right now is how difficult the install is, and that's one of the things that they're addressing in the next release coming out at the end of this year. Um, that's that was their number one priority. And they're actually having their own conference at the end of October, and we'll be, go we'll be going to that and getting copies of the beta version coming out soon after of that product. What other questions can I answer? I know we've got a diverse group on the phone here. They're too quiet, Becky. Well, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to, um, I will send off the emails. I've got a few of them already popping up requesting PowerPoint presentation. I will make sure I send those off today. Um, if there's anything you need in the meantime, please feel free to bug me. Um, I'll actually stay on the phone for the next five minutes. So if anyone wants to just ask anything, I'm going to stay on the line for the next five minutes and be happy to you know, help you guys out. Otherwise, I really appreciate you taking time out of your day for um, to see all the stuff coming down and and when we get closer to the actual release we'll make sure that we you know do a hands on and we'll do more and more training on it. That's it, that's all I have. All right, thanks Stuart. Thank you.